composing a speech. I didn't have that luxury this time. I've been pretty busy. But I want to thank you all for turning out on this rainy day. In my 50 years of political activism, I've participated in and witnessed great political upheavals. The 1950s and 60s saw the great anti-desegregation struggles. The sit-ins, the strikes, the rallies that defeated America's version of apartheid. The 1960s and 70s saw American civilians and soldiers mount massive anti-war protests that forced the United States to stop its unjust war in Vietnam. Those same decades saw an incredible courage of women who stood up against sexism. They brought us all greater equality and helped us all see beyond our stereotyped sex roles to our basic humanity. And who can forget the brave gay people of America who have kept on protesting and are now gaining many victories. But during the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, around election time, all protest activity ground to a halt. Nobody wanted to cause a backlash, spoil the chances for the good guy. The politicians, the pundits, and opinion makers always said that the upcoming election was the most important election of the century. The most important election of our lifetimes. And nobody wanted to spoil such an important and historic election with a few messy protesters like you guys. But today, in 2012, just two weeks and five days before another one of, quote, the most important elections of a lifetime, unquote, it looks like the politicians haven't been able to hoodwink you into staying out of the streets. Congratulations! You're sharper than we were back in the day. You've learned your bitter lesson. Let's give ourselves a big round of applause. You've learned from your bitter experience. Look around you. Gaze into each other's eyes. You give me hope. I'm getting old, and I probably won't live long enough to see the revolution. But in my heart, I believe deep down, many of you here today will. Thank you for the optimistic hope that I have in the autumn of my life. And when the revolution happens, if my body has been cremated and I'm no longer here, no, my spirit marches in lockstep along with you, aside you in struggle. Know that you breathe my breath. Know that my remains float in the air, float in the water you drink, and my ashes nourish the plants that you eat and nourish the revolution. For you are the future of the planet. You are the architects and citizens of tomorrow, the people who hunger for justice and fair play. You are the people who don't let a bit of discomfort steer you away from your duty to this world. To our children, let's give ourselves another round of applause. Today and tomorrow, we honor and celebrate our movement Occupy Tacoma, which was one of the longest lasting protest encampments of its kind in the country. Our protest occupation weathered wind storms, snow storms, much worse weather than we have here today. And at the height of the occupation, we had around 70 tents in this tiny space. These dedicated occupiers enabled Occupy Tacoma to have a dialogue with a sizable percentage of, the, of Tacoma's 99%. We appealed to, talked to, engaged with, and learned from our fellow 99%ers. Before Occupy Tacoma happened on the scene, most Tacoma residents knew little about Occupy Wall Street. You 
brought the issue to their attention. You. Don't you think we have a right to be proud of ourselves? Don't you? When Occupy Tacoma started with half a dozen protesters just one year ago, it touched a raw nerve. Within a month or so, tens of thousands of other Americans have occupied many other sites, all in a space of a few weeks. Wasn't that remarkable? You made history. You're a part of history. Aren't you proud of that? Years from now, you can tell your grandchildren with pride, I was part of Occupy Wall Street and Occupy Tacoma. The Occupy movement changed America's political dialogue. We focused attention to the crimes of the robber barons and plutocrats, to those of us who lost our homes and jobs while the super rich got bailed out during the worst economic downturn since the 1930s. We marched the streets shouting, banks got bailed out, we got sold out. Let's hear it. Banks got bailed out, we got sold out. Now the cynics in the halls of power, the plutocracy smoke-filled rooms might ask with a sneer in their voice something like this. Where the hell is Tacoma's occupation park anyhow? What did it mean? I say Tacoma's occupation park is smack dab in the middle of middle America. You don't believe me? Well, check this out. Maine, which is America's easternmost state, is 3,000 miles to the east of Tacoma's occupation park. Hawaii, America's westernmost state, is 2,700 miles west of our occupation park. Anchorage, Alaska, America's northernmost city, is almost 2,300 miles north of Tacoma's occupation park. And Brownsville, Texas, is 2,400 miles south of Tacoma's occupation park. Now tell me, doesn't that make occupation Tacoma the geographical center of middle America? Moreover, the Occupy movement is the voice of the real middle America. We are today in tomorrow's political and spiritual middle America. The Joe Sixpacks that the politicians and pundits have been calling middle America are actually yesterday's middle America. It is we who are middle America. We are Occupy the Future, Occupy the World. Most of the mass media aren't overly kind to us, you know. Did you know that just three corporations, mega corporations, control 80% of the mass media? Well, these three mega corporations are the 1%'s mouthpieces. That's why they trivialize us, dismiss us as being unimportant, say we are a spent force. But as you can see, we're here, we're proud, and we are strong. Did you ever hear of Conservapedia? That's the far right's answer to Wikipedia, which they claim has a, quote, liberal bias, unquote. Here's how they describe us. Quote, leftist protest occupation Wall Street is an ongoing anti-capitalism rally, rapists and murderers playground, beginning as an astroturfing campaign funded by a George Soros group called Adbusters, with the ultimate goal of replacing the United States Constitution with a form of government akin to communist totalitarianism." Unquote. Apparently, Conservapedia fired the editors who knew how to put together a decent English sentence, and that's just crap. Can you imagine that? A movement dedicated to putting power in the hands of the 99%, the majority is totalitarian? a movement dedicated to transferring power from those gangsters, murderers, brigands, and thieves who make up the plutocracy as totalitarian. Sheesh. Ted Nugent says this about us, quote, we are useful pawns, and that's about it. Those useful idiots are clamoring for social justice as if they don't have enough of that already. From what I can tell, the soft-headed numbskulls of Occupy Wall Street want investment bankers to give up their wealth, as in spread the wealth around. They are blaming Wall Street for our sad state of economic malaise, 
and all the other problems of the world, unquote. Well, golly and gee whiz, the nerve of those occupiers. Spread the wealth around? Instead of that, why don't the ruling 1% class just quit stealing wealth from us, pay their employees fair wages, stop shipping our jobs overseas, and pay their fair share of taxes? Didn't they steal enough from us? Do you know what the 1% fear the most? They fear you. The 1% fear our power if we unite. They fear their days are numbered. They fear the Bible prediction may come true. The first shall come last and the last shall come first. They fear justice. They fear fair play. They fear you. You are their worst nightmare. The hacktivist group Anonymous sums up our struggle like this. The heroic fight with us, the honest support us, the corrupt fear us, for we are legion, united as one, divided by none, we do not forget, we do not forgive, expect us. Thank you.